All right, so what she wants to do, what, she, what she's going to do is you're going to get one drop of this and he's going to put it, oh my God, oh yeah, he's, he's going to put it right on the boat. And then what, she, what she's going to do is he's going to get the rest of the boat. And he's going to, just, just one drop, just one, one drop, all you need. Just, just one drop. And then he's going to put them in the flower. Yeah. So all you're going to need for this step, ladies and gentlemen, is just a little bit of grease. So what you're going to do with this, just get it all up in there. Just all up in the giblets. Grease her up. All right, just kidding. I'm done doing that voice. But in all reality, it's always good practice to lube that up. I also like to, you know, lube up the bearing. I already lubed the center part of it. So then what you're going to do, stick that little sucker in there. And I'm using a 22 millimeter. Since it contacts the outer perimeter of the bearing only. So what we're gonna do is get your 22 mil socket. If that's what works, just make sure you're only contacting the outer surface. Go ahead and tap her in. A little tap, tap, tap her woo. Just tap it in. Just tap it in, happy. So the E30 bearings, the real OG ones have this outer cover on them, so you don't really have to be too careful because the outer cover only contacts that bearing surface I told you about. All right, so that right there is a properly installed, albeit used, pilot bearing. And you can see that it's recessed from the outer lip about an eighth of an inch, possibly even up to a quarter, but that is fully seated and that's what you want it to look like. If it doesn't look like that, you did something wrong. And as you can tell, the last guy that pulled the transmission off or put it in kind of botched it a little bit because it's got a little bit of a, a ding right there, but that's okay because the car drove fine. Uh, at least the donor car did that I took all these parts out of. Uh, so that is complete. Next step, flywheel. Let's get her done. Sitting right over here, it's a 19 mil. I highly recommend using a little bit of red Loctite which I have already applied to this. On the crank, there is a guide dowel. Now, that guide dowel lines up to one of the holes on the back of the flywheel. So, boom, right there. Big hole, dowel hole, flywheel. Ow, fuck. Should smash your finger real good. All right. Get one of these little suckers started so it doesn't fall on my toes, because that would not feel good. All right, so now that that's on, I want to make sure it's fully seated before I torque anything. So this is definitely an official BMW procedure right here. All right. Um, and then torque on these, I believe, is 77 foot-pounds. So once you get all the bolts started, start them by hand. Uh, get at least blue Loctite on all of them and then 77 foot-pounds I believe is the torque spec but I'm going by memory so don't count on me for that look it up okay for the next step you're going to need one of these if you don't have one of these watch my previous video on what video was it LSE 30. on the LSE 30 on how to make a ghetto one of these um, I talk about it you don't need an official tool but these plastic tools are cheap so if you know you're gonna do this just go ahead and buy one on eBay or something if you didn't buy a new clutch. This is a new clutch, so it came with one. So, what you're gonna do, put this little sucker on there. Okay, so, when you're installing a clutch disc, you want to make sure if it has an asymmetrical section that the larger side is facing the transmission. So it splines onto the input shaft of the transmission. Also, a lot of times on these discs, these sections are raised. You wanna make sure that the raised sections of these are also facing the transmission. That is the most important part. If you do not do that, your clutch disc will contact these bolts and you will have problems. So make sure you install your disc and the proper orientation. On this E30 with this clutch, this is the proper orientation. So put your tool in, put your disc on, and then the next step, so you're gonna take your pressure plate and you are going to get it on and Make sure you use Loctite on your pressure plate bolts. I like to get two of them started, one on each side, so it doesn't fall off on me. And you're gonna tighten these to the specified torque value. The value for the torque uh, 
if you're buying new bolts should be with the bolts or the clutch if it's not look it up on the internet i forget it should be somewhere in the vicinity of 30 foot pounds i believe Does that sound right yeah sick okay so when you're tightening the pressure plate very important to tighten it evenly so you're going to do star pattern right so if you've got six bolts bam 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 tighten them evenly in three steps until you make sure that this surface right here so you want your pressure plate to be fully contacting your flywheel and only then can you uh, torque the bolts to their final torque okay so we're gonna do that right now uh, and then the next step transmissions going in okay so all of the pressure plate bolts are loctited and tight and torqued tight torque tight tighted the next step don't do what you're about to see me do I'm doing this genuinely just to see if I can do it on video I'm gonna put the transmission on solo. All right, I'm probably about to make some interesting noises, so disclaimer, if you hear some interesting noises, it's because I'm lifting heavy things. All right, nope, doing a solo. I'm just gonna watch. Good. I'm not doing it solo. It's not coming. I think the engine needs to be tilted. Can you push the engine down, Chris? Or like up from the other side? It'd be easier if you just push the oil pan up or the crank. There we go. Let's see if we can get a bingo. All right. What was that? Oh, nice. Okay, it's kind of on. I did it. Can you get a pole jack so I can stop holding this? Whew, okay, so. I'm a serial glove terror, but I got the trans on. Um, it's not all the way splined right now. I'm gonna try to take, try to take care of that. Thank you. Uh, what you wanna make sure you don't do is pull the transmission on with the bolts. If you're encountering resistance, something's wrong. Figure it out. Either your clutch isn't aligned or your pilot bearing isn't aligned. Something's not right. So do not pull the transmission on with the bolts bad news get it to spline fully and then put the bolts in so now that I've got it on I'm gonna work on getting it to spline and we'll stick the bolts in installing the butthole so let's do that boom all you got to do so I left the clip on the trans so I can just take it off when you're installing this it goes in from the driver's side clicks in and then flips forward so very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the shifter up through the hole slide this forward and then we're gonna go backwards into the hole top hole or bottom uh i can't remember so we're gonna put it in that and then you put your pin in make sure it's through both sides flip it all the way forward click it down bam and then you just got to put your 13 millimeter nut on the other side your linkage is now or i'm sorry your carrier is now installed next step i can get this off next step Boom, right there. Now this is officially a five-speed car. Uh, the only thing left to do is drive shaft and wiring. Um, drive shaft's very straightforward. I'm not even gonna show you guys how to do it. You saw me take it off, you can put it on. Three bolts, two 13 millimeters here, four 17 millimeters on the back. Very easy. Now, finally, for your clutch to work, what you're gonna need to do is put your slave cylinder on. Um, and I forgot to open the bleeder valve on this so it'll gravity bleed, but that's okay. We've got a power bleeder, so that'll take care of that. So now I'm going to stick this guy on here. And this is a new slave cylinder, so always good to do new stuff when you're doing a swap. Make sure the pin goes into the little divot in the uh, clutch fork. You'll see it. And then get your washer on. And lastly, your nut. Do the same for the top side. Tighten them down, and that side is good. All right, now, uh, as soon as I get this on, I will show you exactly what you need to do to get the car to start. Now, I'm only gonna go through basic wiring for the, uh, to get the car to start and run and drive. Uh, if you guys need anything more advanced than what I'm showing you on this video, 
please feel, feel free to contact me at milehigheuros at gmail.com. Or comment below. Or comment below, please. And also, you know, subscribe and all that good stuff. Helps us out, and I can continue making videos on how to do stupid things to E30s. All right. So, the E30 is extremely easy to get wired as far as basic running function. The only thing you're going to do, you're going to make a jumper wire for this plug right here. This is where the automatic transmission linkage used to plug in. You're gonna make a jumper. Um, can't remember the exact pins, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Hook up the jumper, get it so it starts, and then I'll show you exactly what the pins are and what the wiring looks like. But it's very easy. You literally just link two of these pins and it should fire right up. Uh, the other thing that you'll need to do is for the reverse wiring, um, but there is quite frankly tons of stuff on the internet on how to do the wiring on these cars. Um, however, if you're having trouble with it, if you're struggling with it, please let us know and we'll try to help out where we can. Um, but this car is more or less done. It was missing most of the stuff in here, so that's not anything that I'm gonna worry about. All of the manual transmission components are installed, so she's good to go.